Good evening. And welcome to our Mass of the Lord's Supper. I welcome those of you joining us in person as well as all of you joining us online. Well, tonight the church begins the Paschal Triduum, the three days of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. And that celebration begins with tonight's liturgy of Holy Thursday. I want to just share with you a few things that will be taking place so that your worship will be enhanced by fuller participation. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to make sure any of your devices are in a silent mode. This evening we will have SLAM, our children's worship, for those in kindergarten through fifth grade, and the children will be dismissed as usual after the opening prayer. After the homily, we will have the washing of the feet, and participants this year are members of our adult small groups. The collection tonight will support our parish mission activities. This evening, we will be offering the cup at communion for those who wish to receive the precious blood. After communion, when we have the transfer of the Eucharist from the sanctuary to the altar of reposition in the hall, Deacon Doyle and the servers and I will process from the sanctuary here down the aisle by the choir, around the back of the church, up the side aisle, and then out the doors here to the hall. And rather than filing in behind us as we pass your pew, we ask that you wait until we go through these doors and then you can just leave your pew and follow us to the hall if you choose to, or you may depart at that time. Once the Blessed Sacrament has been placed in the tabernacle and the song ends, our liturgy will conclude. And in keeping with the solemnity of the liturgy, we ask you to please depart in silence. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. Our Mass will begin in just a moment. and welcome to St. Pius X Church. Good evening, and welcome to St. Pius X Church. Please stand for our opening song.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us pause and call to mind our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a new sacrifice for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, it's now time for SLAM, our children's worship. I'd like to invite all those in kindergarten through fifth grade to exit church through the back. A reading from the Gospel of Exodus, 
The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old, male, and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of the blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loin skirt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord, for on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and execute, execute, excuse me, executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord, and ex by the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a, a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Holy Thursday, everyone. Thank you, thank you. And let's give ourselves a big pat on the back. We made it through Lent. The season of Lent ended when tonight's Mass began. And it was a busy 40 days between all of our liturgies, our Stations of the Cross, our Lenten small groups. We also had two sessions on the Eucharist titled, Do What in Memory of Me? We decided to offer these sessions because the Catholic Church in America is in the midst of a Eucharistic renewal. 
The bishops have called for this because of declining mass attendance and concerns that churchgoers don't fully understand the Eucharist. In session one of Do What in Memory of Me, we began by posing a question, a question I'm going to ask you now. When you see the word Eucharist, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Just take a moment. Think of this word. Now, when we did this at our session, some people said that Eucharist means Jesus' body and blood, or Holy Communion, or God's presence, which are all nouns, aren't they? They're describing a person or a thing. And some people said the Eucharist is encountering God. It's giving thanks. It's coming to Mass. It's becoming holier. So verbs, actions. And then we propose that we need to see Eucharist as both a noun and a verb in order to really understand and experience what Christ is offering us in this sacrament. Because if it's only the noun, only the host you receive, then your participation in the Mass can be reduced to just a single moment the moment when the body of Christ is given to you. And in order for there to be a true renewal of the Eucharist, we all need to understand that what happens in here around this altar is something that we all do together. You are not a bystander passively watching me do or say something. No, you must see yourself as an active participant in the celebration. At tonight's Mass, I will use Eucharistic Prayer 3. And I want you to listen for a few phrases in the prayer that remind you how the Mass and the Eucharist should change you, how it should bring about that renewal. Here's one of those phrases. It's a prayer addressed to God. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. I'm sure you've heard this many times, but I think it's easy to miss just how powerful a prayer this is. We're asking God to make us one, to unite us with Christ and each other. We gather around the altar, the sacred table, pleading with God to bring us together and to keep us together. Why do we need this so badly? So that we can go out there and work for unity in our world, amongst our family and friends, within our workplaces and schools, in our neighborhoods, in our nation, and in our world. There is so much disunity in our world right now, so much division and distrust. It's up to us, as members of the body of Christ, to work as hard as we can to bring about unity within the human family. It's a tall order, and we can't do it on our own. We need the help of each other, and we need the help of God. It's the only way it'll work. So we pray constantly, asking God to make us one. And Here's the second phrase in tonight's Eucharistic prayer I want you to listen for. We will pray to God asking, may he make of us an eternal offering to you. May he make of us an eternal offering to you. Or to paraphrase, we're saying, Father, may Christ your Son make of our lives an eternal offering to you. So more than bread and wine are being offered at Mass. An essential part of the sacrifice is us, offering to God our very lives. What would that offering look like? It would mean leaving Mass, resolved to be the best spouse you can be, the best parent or child or sibling possible. Being an eternal offering to God means resolving that in the next week, you would be the best employee co-worker or boss imaginable. 
you'd leave here deciding to be the most devoted friend, the most helpful neighbor. It means all of us recommitting at every Mass to live as disciples of Jesus, doing the hard work of loving God and others more than we love ourselves. And when all of us do this, we become the church, the body of Christ, the body of Christ that Jesus needs us to be, transforming Bowie and beyond. We make these prayers together every time Mass is offered here or anywhere. Tonight in the Eucharistic prayer, when you hear me repeat Jesus' words from the Last Supper, do this in memory of me, ask Christ at that moment to nourish you, to strengthen you, and to renew you. That receiving the body of Christ, you may go forth to be his body in the world. Amen. We'll now have the washing of the feet.
Please rise. On the night before his death, Jesus sat at the table with his disciples and gave them the gift of his body and blood. Gathered to commemorate that sacred supper, let us join Christ and pray to the Father for all our needs. For those called to the priesthood of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless and strengthen them with the gift of deep holiness and pastoral charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of leadership in the world, may they use their power to help bring an end to suffering in all forms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the liturgical ministers of St. Pius X Church, may they always serve the Lord and his people with kindness and devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for the poor and needy, may the Lord give them strength and patience as they minister to the least among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with mental, physical, or emotional illness, may they see in their suffering a share in the cross of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be welcomed to the table of Christ's banquet in heaven, especially for Joseph Clark, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our parish prayer book and for the personal needs we now offer to God in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we present our needs, humbled by the Eucharistic love of your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of our everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and 
recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder, at this time we will have the procession of the Blessed Sacrament, the altar of reposition in our parish hall. You're invited to follow us once we exit through the side door, or you may depart for the evening.
Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. This concludes our Thursday liturgy. Thank you for joining us. The hall will remain open until 9 p.m. for anyone who wishes to remain for quiet prayer. Everyone else is free to go at this time, and we ask you to please depart in silence.